shop. My name is Steve. Today I've got a little project I want to bring you along with me. Um, I, I've got some uh, tires. I just uh, finished balancing some Model A uh, wheels and tires and um, I thought maybe this might be an inter interesting video. This is an old-fashioned snap-on uh, wheel balancer, static wheel balancer. Um, what I've got on the wheel balancer now is uh, one of the wheels off my cord and I thought I'd just show you how uh, these old balancers uh, worked. Um, I know uh, Harbor Freight and some of the other uh, northern different places have the bubble balancer and the tire lays horizontally and you uh, level it that way or balance it that way. Uh, this one is a kind of a, a unique uh, setup and I'll, uh, I'll show you how we're, how we're going to do it. Okay, so let's get started. All right, let's go through some of the parts of this uh, wheel balancer. Um, this is the, uh, there's two cones and then there's two additional cones that come with it. Um, at least I think they come with it. Uh, as far as I know, this one, this one may be somebody made, looks handmade. Anyhow, we've got these, these two cones and these two cones, the uh, shaft that they, that holds everything together. There's a locking nut that goes on there. We have our tool for putting the weights on and taking them off. Um, and a couple more pieces I'll describe as we go. Um, this is a snap-on WBK2C, two Charlie, okay, wheel balancer. Um, and you can do from 13 up to whatever will fit in here, just about, I believe it uh, goes up to uh, <clears throat> 20 some inches. Uh, so it's pretty good for as compact and, and small as this thing is. Uh, you can do a wide range of tire sizes uh, from motorcycle wheels to uh, uh, pretty much anything. We've got some big wheels here, 34 by 5s. I haven't tried to do those yet. Uh, they may not uh, uh, fit exactly, but it can be adapted. You could take, for example, if you needed more height, uh, if the wheel was touching down here, tire was so big it wouldn't fit, these come off. You could make a couple of adapters to fit on there and raise these up as high as you need. So that's, that's uh, the height problem is not uh, a big deal. Um, so it can be, it can be adjusted for a lot of different sizes. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I put it on the, put the wheel on the balancer. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. And We'll bring these two pieces in play now. This this uh, cone will come off, but there's a there's a keeper right here, a snap ring on there that so keeps that there. And then what we want to do is figure out how to best put this on the wheel. And we'll use this for our centering. I'll put this on the front side now. If I put this cone on here this way it won't work so it has to go thusly so that's going to fit on there like that now the problem is the locking this locking nut will not go all the way up let me lay this, let me lay this down like that for a second the, the nut stops right here, so we're going to have to use one of these other um, cones as a spacer. So I'm just going to slide that on there, and then we'll put the, the locking nut on here. Alright. 
So I get that on there nice and tight. And now we've got kind of a straight axle going through the middle of the tire. And this tire is a 650 16 inch. That's going to be important a little later on to know the size of the, of the tire. So now all we have to do is mount the wheel tire and assembly on here. Now it recommends that you kind of make sure that the uh, these two uh, roller bearing uh, things aren't cocked. You want those running nice and true on the shaft. And it's going to gyrate uh, until it finds the heaviest part. I'm just going to turn it this way. I'm going to get the heaviest part to the bottom. since it's low to the ground and my joints aren't as young as they used to be it's going to be a little easier for me if I sit down so once we find the bottom or the heavy the heavy end of the tire let's see what did I do with it the uh, The directions say to use a piece of chalk and mark uh, the bottom. Now, um, that's okay. Let me turn this around because I want to put the, I don't want to put the weights on the front. I want to put the weights on the back of the wheel. I don't think it's going to take more than uh, two or three ounces. Doesn't doesn't look like it's that far out just by the way it's going here. Let me just turn this around so we can see the back side. Okay. And I'm just going to touch it just slightly just to kind of put the brakes on. Or this thing will gyrate back and forth like a pendulum for a long time unless I kind of help it slow down. So there. We're getting real close to the heaviest part at the bottom. And it says to use chalk, and that's okay. If you got chalk that works good, some, some tires don't like chalk. It's hard to get the chalk to work. At least my chalk doesn't seem to work very well on them. So what I've decided to do, and, and this will work just as good. I'm just gonna take a piece of tape, <clears throat> and I'm gonna mark right here on the tire. That's the, the heaviest, heaviest part of the tire is right there now. Okay. So how do we determine how much weight it's going to require to balance it? Now let's say, for example, it would take two ounces and it would be balanced. Well, if I was to put two ounces up here, that would make it balanced, but it's not the best balance. What we're looking for is a, is a distributed balance so that we don't have um, harmonic disturbances while you're going down the road. You get a thing going and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll just start vibrating. Uh, even though it's balanced, it can still start to to shake if it hits the road, just a bump at the right spot as it's turning and can throw it off. So what we want to try and do is minimize that. And so first of all, we have to determine how, how much weight we're going to require. Now this tool comes with, uh, and I don't know if I can bring that up here. I'll see if I can let you see that a little closer. Yeah. Okay, good. Right here it says, uh, 16 inch and on this side it says 16 inch but if I was to turn it 
I've got 15 here, 15 there. And we go to 14 and 14. And then we go to 13 and 17. Whoop, hey, what happened there, huh? We got a 17 and a 13. So these are all different sizes. Now, if we don't have the size we need, but we do in this one, in this particular place, we do have a 16 inch. That's what the wheel is. So we're, we're, we're set. But if we had a 13 and a half or 16 and a half, we'd have to do something else. So this wouldn't work correctly. So there's a table that we can go to that'll tell us what to do next. Okay. So I'm going to set this on 16 and I'm going to zero. This is actually a, a weight that slides and you can move it in either direction and it's got a little center point and when I hit get to the center it clicks and, and locks into place. It's not real hard, it's just easy to take off but it does center on zero. So that's where we want to begin. So let's go back to the tire now. What I want to do is get him bring in a little closer. What I want to do now is I want to put this in a perfectly vertical position, parallel or straight in line with this upright, and also in line with the tire. So I'm just going to kick this over just a little bit, holding the tire and get this straight. Now, once it's in position, we're going to set these three lock screws. Then we're going to swing this up to the horizontal where the this is at horizontal. We've got maximum weight going down this way. See how that goes back to zero? OK. All right. So we've got this set up where this is vertical and we're in line with the heavy part. So our, our next step would be to turn this 90 degrees to where it's level. And since this is our heavy end, we're going to slide the weight in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to take my hands off. It's still creeping down. So, I'm going to go up a little bit more. So, we've determined now that it's right at six ounces. So, our next step in this procedure is to bring this back to zero. I'm going to take this down back to our starting point. And now we're going to add this little attachment right here. And this is a little spring steel that's designed to fit on this, these two slots right here, like that. And when we move it all the way over, it swings left and right. And I'll just hold it right there. I don't want to mark. Let's see what mark I need here. You see that? Can you see that? If you see that or not. Okay, there we go. There we go. So I turn this over as far as it goes this way and then push it against the tire. And I'm going to mark, use chalk, or I'm using, in this case, I'm using the, the tape 
I think it's easier than the chalk. The chalk just doesn't seem to. My chalk must be old and doesn't work good anymore. So I'm just marking those two spots. So this piece we're through with. And we've marked where our, our two weights are going to go. We're going to divide the weights equally around the wheel. One, well, this, this weight's already what we're trying to compensate for. So that's the weight, and we're trying to equalize the, the heavy load with these two weights here. If we just put it up here, basically do the same thing, but it's spreading it out this way. It's going to make the, the tire behave more, more, norm, more as a true balance. Now, based on our conversion table for balancing large wheels, okay. We've got a 16 inch rim size and it's telling us that we want to put six ounces on each spot. All right. So we need to find weights now equal six ounces to go on each spot. Now that's a lot of weight to put hang on there. And we may want to just put three ounces on this side and three ounces on the other side, on the opposite side. And, and that'll give us our six ounces on each side. But it sounds like a lot, but that's what it comes out to. So uh, I wanted to show you one other thing, though. They, they didn't mention this. And let me just go back over here and put this at the, at the balance mark, which is right at six ounces. So now we're, we're six ounces, and it's just pretty, pretty balanced there. Now what they're saying is I should be able to turn this 180 degrees, and it'll stay balanced. It's just creeping a little bit, so it's just a little bit. Uh, it stopped. Okay, let's try it this way. So now if I flip this over on this side and stop it right there and then take my hand away, if it stays like it is right now, we're golden. Okay? That was the other thing that they mentioned in the in this instructions. So I would say right now we're good to go. We'll put three ounces here and three ounces here. So let me go uh, through my weights. Uh, they got all mixed up, and I've got to sort them out. And I'm gonna, uh, I meant to I meant to go to the store and buy a, one of those plastic containers to with the divisions in them, so I could sort all these weights. I've got a bucket full of weights that are uh, need to be uh, sorted. So anyway, I'll be what back I've in a done second. Is I've gone and through my weight assortment box. And uh, I've got, uh, these are just, one is just slightly under three ounces and one is just slightly over. Together they, they equal six and the same way with these two. So I've got uh, two sets of weights here and I want to put them uh, on. So I want to put the, now the last tool that I haven't shown you that came with the uh, balancer is this snap-on WWP-11 uh, hammer and installer remover, pry bar, hook, um, and a cutter. There's a, you can actually trim off with this pair of pliers. You can stick the weight in there and chop off a, a set amount, whatever you want to chop off. And it'll also, it's a great, uh, as witnessed by my uh, bandage here, it's also a great uh, uh, pincher right there. It'll get you every time. If you're not real careful, get your, uh, get your skin in there and you'll regret it. Okay, so let's see if we can put a weight on here. Now it does say to take the wheel off of the balancer to put the weights on and I'm not sure why that's necessary, but I'm not going to put the weight completely on because 
uh, I may have to take it off if it doesn't balance correctly here. Now the next thing I want to do is, so what I'm doing here is I'm siding down this line to the center of the axle and then moving over here and lining my finger up to the center of the axle on this side. So the weight should go right about here. So let me see if I can get one weight on here. Okay. So now we can see it's out of, out of kilter that way. I'll bring this back to zero because, and now I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna line this up with my two weights here. And this weight's gonna go right there. And our mark. And then a straight, straight across the other side. And there. So let's see what happens. Looky there. Okay. Not much movement, but the weight's the heavy at the bottom right now. So I'm going to bring the the heavy spot right up here. This is the. If it's going to move. It's going to move now. And it is. It's going to take a little bit more. So what I'm going to do next, just for grins, I'm going to try and add maybe a quarter ounce here and a quarter ounce over here to see if that is enough. And then if that isn't enough, we'll We'll take it up to a half an ounce. If I've got, I'll see what I got. Maybe I got half, maybe I got a quarter. Let me see what I've got, and I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, I went over and I picked up two half inch, uh, half inch, two half ounce weights. And what I want to do now is put one right next to this weight here. I'm going to put it on the heavy side to. Uh, that one there, and we'll put this one over here and see which way it goes, okay. Okay. So let's bring our heavy weight, let's see, here we are, this, we're heavy. This, is our heavy, this was our heavy spot. Okay, it's still heavy there. Huh. Still heavy. Okay. All right. Let me put uh, just for grins. I'm gonna put get see if I got two more half half ounce weights. I'm gonna put on the other side just to see what happens. Okay. Uh, we've got two weights added a uh, half ounce and half ounce, and I found uh, two more, and I want to. Uh, Put those on the other side over here. So let's see how this works here. So I'll put one, one right here. Like that. And I'll put one more right here. Like that. So now see if that's enough. Okay. So this is our heavy, our heavy spot was here. We should be able to set the wheel any place now and it not move. Okay. I'd say we're in balance, are very clear, very near, very, very, very near. It's like a veneer, very near. Okay, let's take it off 
I'm gonna take this off now. Just take it out of the out of the picture. And let's see what happens with that thing off of there. Yeah, that's now it's moving a little bit. Okay. Maybe I should have taken that thing off. Mm-hmm. 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 Now we're getting it. Now our heavy spot is right here, which is directly opposite of where we were. So we got too much weight on here. So I'm gonna have to take off a couple of these. So I'm gonna take the two on the front side because I'd rather have the weight showing on the back than out here on the front. Now, I guess what I'll do is show you how I, how I use this. Uh, being careful not to get my finger in there, or my hand. You hook this little hook in the weight and just pry it away like so. Let me take the one off over here. Okay, so now I've taken an ounce off. Let's see now if that if that's enough. Hmm. It's moving to the heavy spot. Now I only took an ounce off. I could put you know, like a half an ounce maybe in the middle. I don't know. But it's it's within a half an ounce of being where we want to be. And for the speeds that these tires are going to go, that's more than enough because this these tires aren't going to go over 50 miles an hour, I guarantee you, uh, as old as they are. So uh, let's go back to the other side where our marks are so we can see what's... What's what here? This is where we started. This was our heavy spot right here. So I'm going to set it right at 90 and see if it goes down. And it does. Now let me bring it over to this side. And see if it goes down. And it does. Now what I could do is I could move these weights up a little bit further. Because as I move these weights to the top, it changes the, the dynamics. So I'm going to take this, this little weight here off. I'm going to take this little weight off here, off. And now we've, I'm going to take these two weights here and slide them up just a little bit. Move them up this way. About like that. So, so now I've moved it from the center here about an inch that way. I'm going to do the same on this one now. I'm going to move it toward the top. Move it about an inch this way. Now let's see. There. Now, you see that? It's not moving. It's kind of wiggling back and forth there. So let me put this at 90. See if it'll stay there. Okay. Very slightly. Very slightly. It's pretty good there. Let's try it on the other side over here. and see. Okay, so I only used the little ha half ounce weights to help me determine which, how much I was off, if I was off a lot or just off enough. And now by just moving these 
toward each other up this way to the center. Um, because if I moved them all the way up here, we'd be way out of, out of kilter. So just remember when you do that, that's what you got to do. So the ones on this side are staying about where they, I'm going to leave them where they are. And these, I'm just going to move together a little bit. And I think we're, I think we're good to go here. So if anybody has one of these, I'd love to hear comments on, on uh, if they were in, uh, if I did it differently than, than you, you did it, or if you got any suggestions on how I can do it better, uh, that would be swell. Don't mind helpful uh, comments. Um, but anyway, I think we're I think we're good to go on this tire. Just have to finish putting them on and uh, securing them on there good, and then uh, we're done. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you next time. So long for now. All right, this uh, instruction sheet that I got for the uh, balancer. It talks about some other things that you have to be aware of, um, which I'm not going to go into much detail. But the uh, this arm, this arm that uh, has the different scales on it, you rotate it to whatever uh, you need now. If, you, if it doesn't show up here, if it's not a 14, a 15, a 17, or a 13, then you have to use, it tells you to just use the 16-inch scale and then go to this conversion chart on the, in, in the instructions on how to compensate for the weight. So as an example, um, I'll just read here what it says. Read the amount of unbalance on the 16 inch scale. So if it's not on, the, if it's like a, um, what would it be, a 19 inch, let's say a 19 inch wheel rim, then you would go down to the rim size here using the 16 inch scale. So that the 16 inch scale said you needed to put two ounces on then you would go to this table here and it would show you the 19 inch wheel and two ounces would actually only be one and three quarters ounce. So it's a little less because the wheel is out. There's a bigger rim, so the centrifugal force and so forth is gonna be bigger. So you don't need as much weight out there. So it goes from 16 up to 24 inches uh, on this chart. Um, and if you don't have the chart, then you just simply have to make an educated guess on how to do that. Now, I may, I may throw this up at the end on the, uh, put a slide up at the end on the video showing the, the chart. And then it's got this other chart here, conversion table for balancing small wheels. So this goes from... Uh, you use a 14 inch you use the 14 inch scale for small rims uh, such as 13 and a half up or down to six inch so if you got a rim that's six inches it's pretty small uh, then you would use this other scale here the 14 inch scale so you use a 16 inch scale for uh, larger size rims and then you use the uh, they say 14 inch, 14 inch scale for 13 and a half and smaller. So 13 and a half bigger and 13 and a half smaller rim size. 
and it's just a conversion chart, but it's all within, uh, they're very close, so like, uh, and you would add when you get below, uh, so for example, using the 14 inch slide or 14 inch rim size, and it called for a two ounce weight, <clears throat> but you only, but you actually had a 10 inch rim, it would call for two and three quarters ounce. So you'd ask almost uh, three quarters of an ounce more uh, because of the smaller wheel. So the conversion table goes above and below the median. Um, and I've shown you everything else. Uh, marking the weight positions. We showed you that using the uh, um, calibrated beam. They call the calibrated beam. And uh, so that's it for the snap-on tools. So long.